The movie begins with a group of United States government agents arriving at a trailer in an abandoned area after getting reports of an extraterrestrial object that has landed in the area. They talk to a Spanish speaker eyewitness who kept saying the word rebirth in Spanish repeatedly. Agent Stipe asks what rebirth he is talking about, but the witness doesn't respond. One amazing thing about the man, who was previously blind, can now see. Agent Stipe goes outside to the place where the object arrived, but the object is long gone. David Chamberlain, a mechanic who lost his wife some time ago, visits her grave and talks to her about their daughter. On his way to his job, there is a news report about more troops being added for Operation Terminus, the war opened by the United States to occupy Iran. At work, David speaks to his boss, Ned Wilcox, who tells him they are about to shut down and be closed. Right after he leaves his boss's room, he sees Zack, a young man who showed up at the shop looking for a job, standing next to one of the cars open for maintenance. Being in an impossible position, David tells Zack that he is in the wrong place to look for a job and drives off. That night, David goes to a local bar to have drinks with his colleagues after hearing the bad news at work. Zack is also there having a drink until he gets triggered by some racist comments from another man. He goes outside and fights with the man along with the man's friend. David, who noticed Zack at the bar, tries to break up the fight, but in the end, both of them end up getting beaten up. The man and his friend leave after seeing the prosthetic leg of Zack, who was a veteran of the current war in Iraq. David gives the prosthetic leg back to Zack and offers him a ride. He speaks to him about the fight, but Zack is too fed up to accept any advice. David drops him at his motel and goes home. At home, he sees the cake his daughter Annabelle, who was in college, made for him for his birthday, and gets disappointed in himself for forgetting about her. She asks him about his bruises, and he lies saying it was just an accident. While she cleans up his wounds, he notices she brought all her bags and asks her if she quit. She tells him that she was forced to leave because her last two payments didn't go through. He promises to get her back, but she refuses to see him work himself to death. She goes off to bed after giving him a present, a watch with an engraving expressing her love on the back. Upset, Dave brings out a bottle, but notices it is empty. So, he goes out to get some drinks for himself. While he was driving, a bright object came down from the sky, causing him to crash. He gets out of the car with blood all over his face, with his vision all blurry, and follows some girl. The next day, Annabelle wakes up and goes to her dad's room, only to find it empty. She tried to call the police, but it hadn't been 24 hours yet, so there was nothing they could do. She goes to his work, but nobody has seen him. On her way back, she sees his crashed car and hikes into the forest, but she still couldn't find him. Just as she started her car, David appeared standing in front of her out of nowhere. She takes him to a hospital where she waits for him along with his friends. The doctor comes out and asks her about her dad's condition. David was the donor of the kidney his wife was given at a transplant. Her body rejected the kidney, which was the cause of her death. The doctor tells Annabelle that the exams show that her dad has two fully healthy kidneys, which is not possible. After a few days, David is back from the hospital and sits on the chair his wife used to sit on. Then a flashback shows what happened to David, on the night of his accident. That night, Dave dragged himself to the crash site where the mysterious object landed. Some alien object was seen making contact with him while he lay unconscious. Presently, David is having dinner with his daughter, who is staring at him because of what the doctor told her. She tells him that he kept calling her mother and was talking to her as if she was right there. David simply stares at her and says nothing. After dinner, while Annabelle is asleep with the news talking about the war, David hears his wife's voice and goes outside. He follows the voice and meets his dead wife, who tells him not to give up hope but to help create it for their daughter while he sees some visions about an upcoming destruction of the world. Then he goes to a storage room next to their home and starts working on something. He becomes obsessed with the object, thinking it was trying to give him some instructions through his dead wife. Meanwhile, at some secret location, Agent Epstein has a serious conversation with Agent Stipe about chasing some kind of object while the war is going on after being told to close down the facility. He points out the previous job of Agent Stipe, who worked as an army intelligence for four years before joining the agency, and tells him that the war needs men like him on the front lines. But Agent Stipe, who believes he is on the verge of discovering something, 
argues that this thing may change everything and help the United States win the war. Different research is going on around the alien specimen found at the first crash site, while the agents are keeping their eyes on the witness, Mr. Gutierrez. After reporting that there was nothing useful in the alien specimen, the research team wants to open him up and see what's inside the body. The product has a very high risk of killing the subject, but Agent Stipes gives the green light despite being told about the risk. When asked about what to tell his wife, Agent Stipes tells his fellow agent that her husband has suffered a cardiac arrest in the attempt to save him from a lethal virus, and his sacrifice has saved the country from a deadly epidemic. At David's house, when David unwrapped the old car that belonged to his wife, he saw a vision of her sitting in the driver's seat, feeling him with emotion. He gets into the car and takes it out for a drive while his daughter watches old footage of her mother playing with her when she was little, making her tear up. Zack, on the other hand, is sitting with his injured veteran soldier friend Jim, who wants to go back to the war. Zack tells Jim that he would rather die than go back, but Jim retorts back saying going back beats all the looks of sympathy and pity he receives. In the middle of their conversation, David approaches Zack and hires him to retrieve the object. They go to the crash site and David begins to prepare the towing winch while asking Zack to run it. David goes down to the object and sees its branches making some sort of movement. Nonetheless, he ties it in and asks Zack to pull it with the wind. While helping Zack load it onto the truck, Zack touches and senses something pass through his hands. He couldn't exactly describe how he felt, but they both left the crash site. David brings the object to his barn, where he is seen building something. The object is seen glowing, and Annabelle notices her father's recent weird obsession at his barn. At night, while Annabelle watches the news, David notices that she packed her mother's clothes in some boxes and was ready to give them away. She wants to move on and have a fresh start. David picks out one of the clothes, which was his wife's favorite, and gives it to her to keep after telling her that she doesn't need to pretend her mother was never there to move on, which scares her a little bit. Zack is in bed after getting back to the shelter for injured veterans and begins to experience some serious pain in the amputated part of his leg. He takes a look and sees his leg is now growing back. The next day, while Zack is helping Jim, who doesn't trust Zack's intentions, he begins to feel the pain again. His friend tells him it is phantom pain, but Zack thinks something serious must be happening. Then he goes to a protest with other veterans, who also don't want the war, and they begin loudly speaking against the war at the door of the army. But when a fight breaks out with a local man with Jim, Zack's pain becomes more severe, and he is seen bleeding. At the barn, David stares at the object obsessively and observes its difference when exposed to sunlight. But he is suddenly confronted by Dave, who comes to the barn bleeding and in crutches. Dave shouts, asking him what the object did to him, but before he can move any further, he collapses to the ground. Then David takes him to the house where Annabelle, who followed Zack's blood trail, comes in barging, thinking it was her dad. After seeing another bleeding man lying on the couch, she tells him to take him to the hospital, but David tells he needs no hospital and shows her Zack's leg, which was painfully growing. She is shocked to see the leg growing back very slowly, and after sleeping for some time, he wakes up after having a nightmare about the day he lost his legs. David, who goes out to get some coolant for the object, carries Zack with the help of Annabelle, and brings him closer to the object. He hooks up the coolant to the object, stating it was dying from all the heat. Then, he sits Zack next to the object, and its branches begin wrapping around Zack's arm, helping speed up the healing process. Zack's leg regenerates rapidly, and the process freaks out Annabelle. David tries to calm her down, but her mind can't take what she is seeing, and she ends up fainting. Meanwhile, Agent Stipe and the other agents, who were about to travel to Philadelphia, have gotten news about the new object that has crushed Northeast from their position, which was at David's town. They plan to make further investigations, and Agent Stipe is confident he will gain the cooperation of the town sheriff, Sheriff William. The next day, Annabelle wakes up from a dream where she sees herself waiting for her father at the hospital next to her dying mother while holding her hand. After checking her hands to see if the feelings were real, she gets up and goes to the window. She sees Zack, who is now standing on both his legs, walking around outside. He is enjoying the feeling while being in disbelief at the same time. After his excitement passes, he sits down with Annabelle, 
who makes him a cup of coffee. She is still in shock after last night and starts shaking. Zack calms her down and tells her it is going to be okay. She asks him what it feels like and he tells her he has a very strange feeling about all of it, but he is happy it happened. Then they go into the barn to see what David is doing. He is seen drawing some sort of a large structure, which David believes the object is asking him to do. Zack, who is indebted to it after receiving his legs miraculously, joins Zack's cause. However, Annabelle is scared after seeing the power of the object and questions her dad's blind dedication he has been showing ever since he found the object. David tells her the structure is for protection from some inevitable incident that will occur and asks her to trust him. David understands that he is going to need a lot of steel to build the object, and being out of a job, he decides to cheat his friend, Tony. First, he asks him for a single bar of steel as a favor, and his friend complies. He takes his friend out for a drink and gets him drunk. They speak a little about how Annabelle is holding up after the death of her mother and go out. After escorting his drunk friend to his car, Dave takes the key from his friend's pocket and goes to the junkyard, but on their way, they see Agent Stipe and his team all over the crash site. As soon as they reach the junkyard, Zack and Dave start quickly loading the steel. They also steal a cement mixer truck from the place and transport all of it to an abandoned warehouse. They immediately get to work, but time is not their friend now. In the morning, Dave's friend wakes up in his car and finds the keys that Dave put back. Meanwhile, while Agent Stipe's team is analyzing the crash site, along with Sheriff Epstein's presence, they discover a small sample of the object's remains, similar to the one they had at their lab. Then Sheriff Williams, who knows about David's car crash that happened at the same place the team is investigating, mentions David's accident as a coincidence. But Agent Stipe, who doesn't believe in coincidences, takes this as a lead. The team takes the sample and isolates it in a plastic room. The sample has some branches similar to the one the object possesses, and the branches are seen moving in the box in which it is isolated. Scientists explain that the sample has genetic materials resembling plant and animal strands. Some of the strands even appear to be human. The sample is a living organism indicating biogenesis, the emergence of life from a pre-existing one. While David and Zack work relentlessly on the project at the warehouse, Annabelle is seen visiting her mother's grave. She expresses her confusion about the current state of her father. She reveals that she hated him despite doing his best to get her a good life. She tells her mom she misses her and puts a flower. At the same time, David and Zack are at barn welding and forging the structure. After working on it a lot, the structure is finished and they close its lead after carefully securing the box inside the metal structure. Agent Stipe and his colleagues have arrived at Dave's house and they see Annabelle, who was about to burn some of her mother's clothes outside. Just before she lights the match, he approaches her and introduces himself as Agent Julian Stipe from the science agency. He asks her the whereabouts of her father, but she replies by telling him she doesn't know. But Agent Stipe lets himself into the house and waits until David arrives. Then David arrives at home and describes the events leading to the car crash. He describes seeing a light falling from the sky and then blacking out. Agent Stipe tries to persuade David by telling him about the scientific benefits it may have, for other people who need it. Then he mentions the new kidney David miraculously got and shows him the photo of Mr. Gutierrez, the witness who died when Stipe's scientists opened him up for their experiment, and tells him the object may not be as healing as he thought. After seeing that Agent Stipe is not going to let this go, he takes the agents to the barn, which was empty because he had moved the object to the structure in the warehouse, and tells them it melted when it was exposed to the heat. Agent Stipe thanks David for his help and gets out. That night, Annabelle speaks to her father about the men who showed up asking for the object. She knows her father still has the object, and she is afraid they will cut him open like they did to the witness. David explains what he was shown by his mother. He claims to have seen an upcoming destruction that will happen sometime in the future. But Annabelle thinks the object is messing with David's mind, and he doesn't want to accept his wife's death. She firmly tells him his wife is gone and reveals her vision of her mother lying in the hospital waiting for him in her dying moment. After a few arguments, Annabelle leaves disappointed by the fact that Jim still couldn't deal with the death of her mother. David wakes up the next day after seeing a vision of a fire, destroying everything including his daughter standing in front of him. He goes to Annabelle's room, 
and checks on her. While he is driving to the abandoned warehouse, a car is seen tailing him. David sees the car tailing him and calls his friend Mickey for help. David drives into a road with a lot of houses. He enters into one of the turns and stops. Mickey immediately gets into David's car and starts driving in circles. After seeing their plan fail, Agent Stripes orders the arrest of David, but they discovered that David was not the one driving the car, so Agent Stripe orders them to arrest Annabelle instead. While all this is going on, Tony is confronted about the missing steel and the cement mixer truck. David has been caught by the security camera installed, and as a result, Tony's boss gives a strict order to get the truck back to the junkyard immediately. At the warehouse, Zack sees the object glowing in color when he looks inside the steel structure. Then, he sees a vision about the time he lost his legs. The agony and the horrors were all coming back. He kept seeing it until David came back and saw him Do you staring agree? at the object. Uh, let us know in the comments. After staying in also, shock for don't forget a while, to like the video the if object, you enjoyed the recap and, and subscribe to, to my channel for while, more amazing recaps. To visit his See you Jim. in the next one. In the corridors, he meets Annabelle and they have a chat. She tells him about the time her mom got sick. As things went from bad to worse for Annabelle's mom, David spent the time drowning himself in work. This moment reminded her of that time. She also tells him about the agents that came looking for the object. He promises to take her to David, but first he introduces her to Jim, who doesn't believe Zack when he shows him his regenerated leg. As soon as they leave the hospital, they are picked up by the agents. Meanwhile, Tony arrives at the abandoned warehouse and sees the metal structure, then he immediately confronts David about the junkyard incident. He asks him about the structure, but David could give him a straight answer. So he calls the cop, which prompts David to get into a struggle in an attempt to snatch the phone away from Tony's hand. The struggle ends with Tony's accidental death when David kicks him and the edge of a steel table hits Tony at the back of his head. After Tony's death, David gets into the metal structure and sits next to the object where he sees another vision. This time, he meets his wife and hugs her. She asks him about Annabelle. He tells her that she doesn't trust him. Then, after hearing him confess about Tony's accident, she tells him to find Annabelle and Zack because they were the only ones meant to survive the coming disaster. After telling him that he is running out of time, she disappears and he is left standing all alone. Meanwhile, Agent Stipe has Annabelle and Zack confined in David's living room while the news reports the attack on a United States military base of Operation Terminus by a long-range missile from Russia. Agent Stipe tries to get through Zack, who is sitting handcuffed on a chair. He tells him about all the different possibilities this could give for the soldiers fighting the war and about ending the war. But Zack keeps quiet. Then he turns to Annabelle, who tells him the object is far from here. Finally, Agent Stipe decides to use his last resort torture and begins beating up Zack. Outside the house, David arrives at the house and sees what is going on. He destroys the agent who was with Agent Stipe by lighting a fire, the one Annabelle was going to burn his wife's clothes with. And then he enters the house and points his gun at Agent Stipe's head. David asks him to throw the keys of the cuffs to Annabelle, who uncuffs Zack and hits Agent Stipe on the back of his head to make him unconscious. They manage to escape from the house, but not before Agent Stipe shoots Annabelle in the back. He did this because now David has no option but to take her to the object to get healed. Zack quickly drives the car while David, who is very emotional after he saw Annabelle get shot, cares for his daughter at the back of the car. Agent Stipe and his partner follow them at the back. His partner believes the object is not sent to win wars, but Agent Stipe is determined to do whatever it takes to win the war, which has now escalated and nuclear weapons are about to be used. Annabelle, on the other hand, is losing blood, but somehow she keeps repeatedly saying the exact words his wife said to him in the vision he saw earlier. David starts crying when he hears her uttering the words. After some minutes, they arrive at the warehouse and David gets her into the structure next to the alien object. But the object is not showing any movement, which makes David angry. At the same time, Agent Stipe and his partner have arrived at the scene, forcing David to leave Annabelle inside the object. David thinks his daughter is dead, and he decides to burn the object. Just when he was about to light it on fire, Agent Stipe and his partner confronted him with a gun. Surprisingly, Annabelle comes calling out for her dad, and David closes his lighter, but he is shot in cold blood by Agent Stipe, and Zack opens fire on all the agents present at the scene, 
which leaves all of them wounded. Agent Stipe gets shot by his partner, and Zack gets shot in the shoulder. Suddenly, an explosion was heard, which meant only one thing. A nuclear bomb had been dropped. David tells Zack to look after his daughter, and orders him to get inside the steel structure. He tearfully tells Annabelle that he is sorry, and that he couldn't come with them. Then he closes the structure's door, and meets his demise with the rest of the world. The inside part of the structure, which is covered by some organic material, begins to fill up with water, and Annabelle gets submerged in water along with Zack. After centuries have passed, the door of the structure opens. Annabelle and Zack wake up from their cryogenic suspension, and the world is in ruins.